everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of Astronomy for Beginners and today I'm going to do another video guide on how to connect a camera to your telescope. There's a lot of people out there who are struggling to connect a camera onto a telescope. Uh, usually uh, there are so many different ways you can connect to the telescope. But I'm going to show you a variety of equipment that uh, how to connect um, a camera onto the telescope. Now, CCD cameras are specially designed for deep sky images, or you can have a dedicated planetary uh, CCD. The trouble is, though, with these cameras, they can be often be very expensive, and not many people can afford a CCD or a dedicated planetary camera. However, if you do actually own a camera like this, which is a DSLR camera, then believe it or not, you can attach this camera onto a telescope. So if you're an owner of one of these type of cameras, I have an EOS Canon 1100D, which is a very good starter camera for astrophotography. It's obviously dual purpose and, and quite good. But I'm going to show you now how to connect one of these onto uh, a telescope. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on the right equipment and I'm going to show you hints and tips on certain equipment, especially for telescopes, because there's a lot of branded telescopes out there that have different ways of connecting one of these uh, cameras onto your telescope. So I'm going to detail more or less on the uh, Skywatcher Braden telescopes. It does cover some aspects of the Celestron ones as well. There are some Celestron telescopes out there that are very similar to the Skywatcher. So then what we're going to do now, we're going to take a closer look at the equipment. So we've got a DSLR. Uh, the good thing uh, about DSLRs is they're a good all-round uh, camera. You can use it for many things, for astrophotography. You can take really good wide field shots of the night sky, as well as taking great pictures of the moon and the planets. Uh, and also, more importantly, uh, the deep sky objects that you can use by using the manual setting and taking long exposure photography. Very cheap to buy. I mean, this Canon EOS cost me around about uh, £200 with the lens, which is second hand. You can get really good, uh, more expensive DSLR cameras, but, but for entry level, the Canon EOS uh, 1100D is probably uh, the perfect choice for an entry level camera. Now, as a lot of people say that the, they introduce a little bit of noise. If you refer to my uh, video guide, is that you can uh, take dark uh, frames and able to eliminate some of that noise by stacking the images together. So there's no real hardship, even though it's, it's noisy, it's a noisy camera. You can always take darks to eliminate and compensate for the interference in the images. It's a very good camera. It's quite lightweight. I wouldn't say it's... Um, light but it's, it's, it's reasonably uh, manageable uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you what different ways on connecting a, a normal DSLR I mean this doesn't just cover uh, Canon uh, cameras it also covers uh, Nikon cameras so doesn't matter what camera you get as long as you get something that's, that you can take off the lens anyways I'm going to take off this lens here by unclipping it and there you go all right of your camera if you want to attach it to your telescope the first thing I would recommend before you start purchasing the most important uh, accessory you need the number one accessory if you want to connect this camera onto your telescope is this this is a T-ring and basically this is a T-ring that fits most EOS cameras. Now 
there are different varieties of these cameras all right and, uh, and different makes will get a t-ring that is purposely designed for the camera all right it's very important that you get the right one again if you've got a Nikon camera there'll be different types of Nikon t-rings now this this adapter enables you to screw into the existing uh, uh, camera mounting so basically as you connect the camera on there okay just make sure you, you fit it in there and you basically give it a twist okay basically now what's happened now the button here there's a locking mechanism all right it's very sturdy and it's not going to come off now these uh, t-ring adapters for the cameras usually cost between 10 to about 30 pounds at the most and the good thing is once you've got the t-ring it will last you for quite some time until you change the camera that is so with the existing camera what this will do is it has an internal thread inside the camera and what this will enable you now is you can fit different adapters now there are various types of adapters out there on the market and there are two different types mainly two different types so we move the camera on one side and basically these are the types this is an inch and a quarter camera uh, T adapter all right it's got a very small nose piece an inch and a quarter here and there is the T uh, thread on this side here this costs usually around about 10 to 20 pounds the good thing about this T adapter is because of the tube you can connect a, a, an eyepiece inside there so you can slot an eyepiece so and then clamp it so you can actually use the eyepiece and use a uh, another projection method uh, of um, close-ups of the planets and stuff like that and also uh, with this you can interconnect uh, different nose pieces and, and whatever however usually this is just um, you can get this uh, in most astral uh, shops and basically what it does it basically screws into into that position there so basically now your t-ring and your camera adapter is now fully fitted and what this will do will enable you to slot it into the eyepiece holder of your telescope without any dramas and then clamp it up and there you go the advantage of this uh, this one is that because uh, certain telescopes have insufficient out focus so basically this will act like a, an extension tube and with this extension tube it will give you a certain amount of gap to give it to into focus it's a very good accessory however you can get camera adapters that are just be this piece here right you have a nose piece inch and a quarter nose piece you can get some adapters like that again cost 10 pounds or 20 pounds at the most and again you can unscrew it there this is really really very effective accessory one disadvantage of this accessory is this now the camera has a massive chip inside all right it's a very big chip and when you unscrew this on here see there is a problem and the problem is is this the nose piece on the inch and a quarter is very narrow and basically when you're taking images you'll probably find that you'll get a light uh, halo uh, in your image basically as if you're looking through a telescope and you've got a nice rounded circle so in the center of the circle of the image as you'll see it is bright and then it will then you'll get the darkening all the way around a perfect round circle and basically that's called vignetting and this vignetting effect uh, can be quite irritatable all right and that's a problem with this type of adapter is because it, the, the narrow field of view is very uh, narrow and you'll get that vignetting effect 
However, you can laminate uh, vignetting taking uh, light grey or known as flat frames so you can laminate the vignetting effect. However, personally, it's a good, it's a good device. However, if you don't want the vignetting effect because the, the chip on your camera is very, bit, is very large on your sensor, then get this one. Uh, this is a Barda adapter, which is, this is called a, again, it's called a T-adapter. It's a larger uh, uh, ring adapter, and basically what I'll do is, it will again, still screws onto the back. And you can still attach uh, your telescope onto there. As long as if your telescope eyepiece holder can accept two inch eyepieces. This adapter will be very useful for telescopes that can take two inch eyepieces and this will fit in nicely. And the good thing is because of the, the large diameter of that adapter you will not get this vignetting effect. All right, So it's a very very good device. Again this barter one costs around about £20 from a lot of good uh, astronomy shops out there right, and it's very adaptable. Alright, there is a bit of a lock ring here so you can adjust the, the gap as well. And the good thing about this is you can fit uh, filters onto this. So you can fit uh, all your light pollution filters onto this uh, adapter and everything. Bear in mind you can still uh, fit onto uh, these ones as well. There is an internal thread in that one. So actually you can fit things like that as well. But there are, you know, there are the yeah, basically two different types of adapters right and they're the second parts that you need as well as your t-ring t you need these parts as well to fit onto your telescope what we're going to do now we're going to take a closer look on the variety of telescopes and some of the problems you will face on your telescope and basically with these uh, hints and tips I'm going to show you different ways and how to get them fitted onto your telescope and we're going to tell you the reasons why we do this on certain telescopes. Right, the first telescope we're going to cover is probably one of my favourites is the Maxitov Cassegrain Telescope which is a compound uh, mirror and lens telescope. This is my firm favourite and, and I'm sure that there's a lot of you guys will also agree if you own this Mac. This is the Mac uh, 127. It's also known as the Planet Killer uh, because the high resolution of the uh, the planets of the images it gets is, um, is fantastic. Now at the moment it's fitted with a 2 inch eyepiece adapter and it also has got a, a 2 inch let me take the disc and cap off and it comes with a, a two-inch Antares lock twist adapter. Now, this is not standard. This is what you don't. Get, this is what you don't get with your Skywatcher Maxitov. If you bought a Maxitov uh, Skywatcher, uh, you usually get the this end, which is this part. Now, this is the standard uh, eyepiece holder that you get for your Mac. Now I kept this one specifically. One thing I'm going to show you is if you've got one of these uh, Microsoft 127 Max or different variants, you will get this normal adapter. Now as you can see, you'll see uh, a little tiny fine thread. Now blue it up, uh, providing you've got your DSLR camera, you can actually fit this uh, this uh, this adapter. The screw on in place okay so basically now you can have attach this onto your Maxitov all right with this little internal thread which is really fantastic for Skywatcher to design a telescope that enable you to connect connect your camera all right very useful however as I said before with its limited diameter of the actual size you may get uh, the interference of vignetting so again this is why I adopted 
for a two inch holder so I upgraded this for a two, a two inch uh, eyepiece holder you can get these for about 20 to 30 pounds from a lot of good uh, astro photography shops uh, uh, this one's done by the telescope service now the main problem is you have to buy the uh, the Mac adapter basically there is a ring inside here here you have an internal ring which you have to take the original one off because basically the original ones are slightly smaller to fit this internal ring in there which enables you to attach your uh, your T2 thread in there so you can take so you can attach uh, two inch fitments this ring costs around about 10 to 15 euros you know, it takes two minutes to fit this is also being featured in my video guides in the last video guys and basically you can unscrew that and enables you to uh, fit two inch eyepieces or diagonal mirrors and any other accessories again this is where the two inch format uh, camera adapter comes in useful I just slot it in place and then there you go I can attach the DSLR camera like so and it will hold it in and it's very snug it's not going to go anywhere so it's very useful the good thing about this uh, modification is that you can still fit uh, inch and a quarter by getting one of these a lot of good astronomy shops like uh, Tring Astronomy and uh, Robber Valley Optics and Telescope Service offer this device they're all different brands all right? and basically you can fit your inch and a quarter eyepieces and attachments to that way so again there are different methods to attach uh, onto this uh, onto the Mac okay you can screw them in place like so and you can and you can attach them straight away lock it in place all right and that's nice and snug if you've got a telescope and it has a two inch adapter fitment the good thing about this device is it's very dual purpose being about 30 to 40 pounds sounds expensive at first but believe me you could do a lot more uh, with this Antares lock twist adapter now basically this acts like this believe it or not uh, it still has its internal thread inside so you can fit your light pollution filters and, and whatever and different uh, attachments like your vertical reducers and, and so forth but a lot of people do not know about this is you can actually unscrew this this actual lock ring itself you can unscrew it you take out the uh, the collet the lock collet and basically what you have now is you have practically got one of these basically this will be able to attach because it has a T2 thread and believe it or not you screw it in there you fit it on there and voila you have a, a 2 inch camera adapter very very useful device right highly recommend anyone to purchase this device this Antares lock twist adapter now T telescope service do one Tring astronomy do one uh, there's a lot of companies now doing this because it sells so well right and it's very good and, and because it's locking device is very suit is very good it basically when it locks it in and it locks in central as well so you're not it keeps your camera in the center of center of view of your optical train so it's worth 30 pounds it's a, a must you know, I, I love this device it's 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 brilliant but, and you can see you know being dual purpose uh, if I was you I would re seriously recommend anyone buying one of these as long as if you've got a uh, two inch format eyepiece holder for your telescope
Now because the Mac is, uh, is suited for planetary imaging, you do not need uh, to fit the camera with a, a with an extension tube. Because the, the Mac has a long fault cool length anyway, you do not want to introduce an extension tube on there because the Mac has a sufficient amount of focus. So when you uh, focus the image, it's, there's loads of travel and there is no requirement for adding extension tube pieces and stuff. And basically, you know, you can quite simply attach your inch and a quarter or two inch adapter, uh, providing you take out the extension tubes, there is no requirement for an extension tube on the Max at all. So it's relatively good. One word of warning is that the Max Tov, regardless of what camera you fit and all that, uh, the telescope has a narrow field of view and when you're using high magnifications by attaching the Barlow, you now if you've got this camera, say that you decide to fit a Barlow, a Barlow lens to get all these high res images. All right, it will fit in there, but to be careful when using high magnification, uh, you may find it can be a bit difficult to get the, the camera into focus and all that. All right, so just be careful when using high powers, because the, the image will jerk a lot and all that, so just be careful. The next telescope we're going to show you is the Newtonian telescope. Now this is my Skywatcher 8 inch Quattro. A very good telescope for attaching a DSLR camera or CCD dedicated camera and this scope will is perfect for long exposure images of deep sky objects like nebula and galaxies with very good field of view and uh, it's highly recommended that for anyone who wants an up truly awesome image telescope is to invest in a, a quattro telescope uh, there are other variants of uh, of these short foot of these short tube Newtonian reflectors and I mean this is an f4 it will give you some wide field views of images not so great on the planets because of the secondary mirror being the way uh, your images tend to be less sharp I'm not just saying I'm not going to go into this uh, argument between refractors and reflectors Personally, I think uh, both telescopes are good on certain advantages. The good thing about the, the reflectors, because of the light gathering uh, aperture of these telescopes being quite large, you can collect more light, it collects the light much quicker uh, in half the time of a small refractor. However, the refractor will reveal better high-res uh, it, yeah, sharper images. The Newtonians uh, lose a bit on that because of the secondary mirror being the way. But don't let this dishearten you. Both scopes are brilliant. One has the advantage over the other. Now I'm not going to go in too much depth into telescopes but I will cover certain aspects of this telescope. Now Newtonians are very cheap to buy now uh, you can get them around, I mean for this one, t uh, 200, 300 pounds, you can get a really good reflector for not much money compared to a refractor which costs double the amount. And because reflectors are renowned uh, to be uh, cheaper because it's only one surface that needs to be ground and that's the primary mirror. You know, and refra refractors, uh, they need to be grounding uh, of the lenses. On, on both sides and that's why the cost mounts up you've got to use a good quality glass they have to be grounded this is just one good quality glass and it's grounded and uh, highly polished with aluminium coatings and that's why reflectors are always going to be cheaper right now what I'm going to do is highlight uh, the main problems about the Newtonian reflector first off now Reflectors are renowned to be an absolute pain 
when you try to take pictures with DSLR or, or dedicated CCD camera. Now the main reason is that reflectors suffer somewhat called inward focus travel. Basically, a lot of reflectors, uh, what happen is when you uh, move the, the focuser up and down, no matter what you do, when you're taking a photo, the image appears blurred, it doesn't seem to focus, and it's very and very annoying. Now, a lot of the reflectors, like this one, the Quattro, is pur purposely designed to be fitted with a DSLR camera. You can take, basically, where the tube has been very, very short, basically, what's happening is that the primary mirror has moved over a lot closer up the tube. Now, if you've seen the Skywatcher Explorer series of the reflectors, they're a little bit longer with a longer uh, focal length. Uh, this has got the standard focuser here. Now, if I was going to fit this camera onto here, uh, this would not go into focus. And the reason behind it is that the focuser tube does not go close enough. All right, and what? And it can be quite annoying. But don't let that disheartening you. Basically, the draw tube on the focuser will be in the way of your primary mirror. Uh, so, no matter how much you focus, it just won't do. It just won't help. So, with the Skywatcher, top tip is that take off the 2 inch adapter. Now, the good thing with the Skywatcher ones, they've made it so that you can fit a 2 inch eyepiece holder, which is a separate part. Now, the good thing about Skywatcher, and I, I love it, with, the, with all their Newtonian reflectors, I mean, these adapters are good. They are actually quite good. The only main problem is they don't have uh, a clamping ring. So when you tighten things up, you may mar or scar your eyepieces. That's the only problem about these. All right. Other than that, they are really good adapters. So, again, I would, I would invest on uh, better eyepiece holders but with the, the brass fitting so that when you tighten up the screws it has a, uh, an internal ring so it doesn't mark your eyepieces. I'm going to give you one top tip. Now with the 2 inch format you can fit your 2 inch camera adapter in there, no worries. All right, you can fit it directly into the, the camera all right, we take off the two in, uh, inch to quarter right, piece holder. Okay. And we screw it in like so. Basically now what you've done is I tighten it up, tighten the lock screw. Basically now what has happened is I've moved the, the camera DSLR into the telescope a lot closer. Now if you, if I was going to fit that I will never achieve focus if I fit the 2 inch adapter. And basically round about there I can get that ca camera into focus with my Newtonian telescope. So basically what I've done is I've moved the camera closer towards the tube and then what that does is because it's moved closer towards the tube I can now get into focus and that's the best way to achieve focus with your uh, Newtonian telescope. Another top tip and with the inch and a quarter holder okay we'll take the camera off with the inch and a quarter holder unfortunately I'm missing the uh, the inch an inch and a quarter holder eyepiece holder now if you've got a sky watcher telescope the holders have this attachment here which I'll show you in the picture now 
and with this eyepiece holder you unscrew it and believe it or not the inch and a quarter has the adapter of the the t-ring thread so basically what you can do is get your camera unscrew screw the inch and a quarter like so and then you can fit it straight in so you can fit it straight into there now unfortunately I haven't got uh, the the standard because of the quattro all right so it doesn't fit this particular uh, model of the focuser now if you was going to fit it onto your your Skywatcher Reflector Explorer series which is the the F5 they have the the bigger uh, focuser Creston focuser on there all right and with those bigger ones they have uh, that eyepiece holder is slightly bigger so that you can then fit your inch and a quarter and then fit your camera directly onto the, the telescope. Now because of the quattros they don't uh, allow you to fit uh, these onto there all right so so that's something to highlight on there. So basically that's something to know if you've got a Skywatcher Explorer reflector or the F5 reflectors you, you can get that covers the the 130 all the way up to the 12 inch with if you've got the different focuser I mean this is the linear ball focuser but the other focuser which is just a normal Creston this adapter will fit directly in there and I'm going to show you a picture to show you how the DSLR camera fits into the telescope. Now again with a lot of Newtonians you do not require a tube extension because if you fit a tube extension on there and you fit your camera you are not going to achieve focus. <clears throat> Make sure you get your camera close to the draw tube as much as you can. Something to highlight when using Newtonian with DSLR or CCD, get just basically just use the adapter and the T ring for Newtonians. Now, if you're one of these people who owns a reflector that only has an inch and a quarter uh, focuser units. Usually you find them on the Skywatcher blue tubes, uh, the blue tube reflectors. Then it seems to be just a rack and opinion focuser and they just won't fit. Now the problem is though, again, they don't have enough uh, focus travel to allow you to achieve focus. So if you want to achieve focus on those blue tube uh, reflectors, Again, get yourself the T-ring and an inch and a quarter eyepiece adapter. Now you may be able to fit it directly onto the, the tube, but you won't get focus. So the one method you, you have to undertake is get yourself a Barlow lens, a two times Barlow that fits inch and a quarter, like so, and basically you're using the Barlow lens as a, a method of getting that tube into focus. So fitting a Barlow lens, slot it into the reflector and then focus. Because the Barlow acts like a, uh, a tele extender and basically what that does is it increases the vertical ratio or vertical length of that telescope. So if I was going to fit it onto this quattro, this will turn this telescope from an F4 to an F8. The disadvantage of using a Barlow lens is that it's going to reduce your exposure times. Uh, it will increase your image scale, particularly in the planets. But it won't increase the uh, the field of view if you want to take uh, deep sky objects. 
right? So that's the, the main problem about using the Barlow lenses. But if you've got the blue tube variants, then it's the only way you can achieve to get your telescope focused. So I'm afraid if you've got the inch and a quarter rack and opinion focuser on your Newtonian, now this is the only way you can achieve focus. However, nothing is lost. You can still take great pictures uh, using this method. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that you just to compensate. If you're taking deep sky objects, you need to increase your exposure times a little bit longer because basically it takes a while to capture all that light photons and your field of view on your deep sky objects will not be quite as wide so you have a restriction but again you can still use this method it works perfectly and you can still take great pictures of the deep sky objects perfect for uh, planetary images because increasing that vertical length will give you much much more close-ups of uh, the planets like Jupiter and Saturn so this method works quite well now we're going to move on to refractors now refractors are brilliant for taking deep sky objects as well as high-res uh, planetary images of the moon and the planets uh, perfect com perfect choice of telescope if you want to take images now this is an acromat it's the st102 it's it's because it's an acromat you will get false color with your images that's the only disadvantage basically you've got chromatic aberration which is the false color where the lenses uh, do not focus the light into a single beam you would usually get a purple halo in, in resulting your images now do not let that disheart you because there are you can still take great pictures using this telescope if you can live with the CA effect there's no problems with it All right, and you can still take brilliant pictures however if you want to take deep sky objects uh, then look into an ED uh, glass type refractor you will pay uh, £300 more than this scope for example but you will get a lot less of that CA effect down to a minimum level you will get a little bit but it's so tiny you don't even notice it in the images you can fork out a lot of money for a triplet apple refractor but then you end up start paying for for a typical telescope of this size to about a thousand plus and I'm not joking that's just the tube so if you are going to take a refractor for uh, some imaging of the, the of the deep sky objects and the planets then look into at least an ED doublet refractor Skywatch should do a very good range of ED models and they range from the 80 millimeter all the way up to the 120 millimeter if you want to get the Apple series then you're going to expect to pay a lot more they're very expensive and it's not always recommended uh, to beginners to invest on a serious amount of money but if you do have the money by all means get the best you can buy or best you can afford but for, for a lot of beginners if you own this one or two uh, Acromat it's perfect so what we're going to do now I'm going to show you uh, a few hidden secrets onto this telescope it has a rack pinion focuser and it does accept 2 inch format personally I would use the 2 inch format same setup if you're taking pictures you want to minimize the amount of uh, you want to minimize the vignetting so using it using the t-ring using the, the 2 inch format take out the lock screws like so and then fit 
your camera like so and then there you go it's that simple I prefer to use a 2 inch format because you're not going to get the vignetting effect and you can and it's a lot more stable however the refractors have one problem uh, as with reflectors they have the inward focus travel refractors is the opposite basically they've got plenty of focus travel now if you're focusing and you want to take great pictures and you're not achieving any focus then you need to start looking into purchasing a tube extension there are a lot of variants out there and you just need it basically what it does is it adds the tube on there and makes it uh, makes the camera just a little bit uh, step back so basically it extends the tube and allow you to focus properly now double check on your camera now if your camera has an auto focusing mechanism switch that off take off the auto focusing mechanism you do not want that auto focus because no matter how much you focus uh, the telescope it will not gain to view switch that off first before you start buying a tube ex uh, extension piece if it still doesn't focus and you've got it all the way back then get yourself at least a 50 millimeter tube extension now this is a, a tube extension but this is a 35 millimeter tube extension right I would seriously I don't have a 2 inch format but you can get 2 inch format they cost around about 20 to 30 pounds for a tube extension luckily if you got this type of camera adapter the inch and a quarter camera adapter now if you have that camera adapter you can then place it on there like so and then hopefully what that does now it basically increases the, uh, the focus tube longer and you can achieve focus that way not all telescopes um, have that amount of focus tube now a lot of the, the more expensive ones have a, plenty of focus travel and usually you don't really need a tube extension however with this particular model on the ST102 and I believe that the 80mm model and the 120mm model of the ACL range has something else if you look closely there seems to be a T adapter on there which enables you to connect your camera that way so again with a T ring you can screw this piece here and then there you go you can fit it that way and again that's another way this is a standard part and it fits directly like so so there you go you got your camera fitted that way so another tip is if you don't have a tube extension there are ways that you can fit onto that telescope and provide enough uh, focus again get your camera make sure you got the T-ring in place slot the eyepiece adapter like so and then get yourself now usually a lot of telescopes have a ball of lens already with supplied get yourself the ball lens fit it in place and slot it and then what that's doing is that's also acting like a tube extension in other words you can achieve focus that way 
Again, depending on your DSLR camera and your telescope, this will help to get you focus. The only trouble with using the barrel lens, as I said before, using reflector, is it will increase your vertical length, which means it's great for planets, not so great if you're taking wide field views of these deep sky objects. But that's another method you can use. Another method, if you're fortunate that your Barlow lens has it, if you're fortunate, you can actually have Barlow's where you can take the actual element itself out. So you can, if you get one of these Barlow's, if you've got a, a decent Barlow, there are Barlow's that allow you to take the, the lens element itself and what's that help? What's that doing? Is it acts the actual tube acts like a, t a, a tube extension itself. So there's other ways. If you want wide field views and you don't want close-ups, then that's another method you can use to overcome uh, your focusing problem. So what that's doing is acting like a tube extension, and then getting focus that way. So that's another little handy tip if you want to achieve uh, wide field shots of the deep sky objects. So again, there are so many different methods and it can be quite confusing. But top tip, if you're all going to use a DSLR, the first number one accessory is get yourself the, the T-ring adapter. Make sure that you get your camera uh, that's fit that's fit to that certain model. Not all T adapters fit all cameras. Now, if you get a Canon EOS, make sure you get a Canon EOS adapter that fits different models. This one does. So be sure that you get the right right model, because if you don't and you try to fit a wrong T ring, you may damage. The, the lock mechanism of your camera. So it's very important that you get the right one. If it doesn't fit properly, send it back to your to the, the, the retailer and ask them to get you another one. Again, I don't want anyone to risk damage your DSLR. You know, you pay a lot of money for a decent camera. Be sure to get the right one. Uh, a lot of the astronomy shops out there will offer uh, camera adapters for variety of models, but when you're ordering your T-ring uh, adapter, make sure you tell the retailer what camera model you have, and it's usually highlighted on the side, on the Canons, and on the Nikons as well. So make sure you get the right uh, brand, right model for for a T adapter. Again, I hope this helped you. This useful guys help you in a way to overcome a lot of your focusing problems because a lot of the telescopes is to do with focusing. So that includes my video guide. I hope I've covered all aspects of your problems relating on connecting a DSLR to your telescope. I can only cover to a certain amount because not, not all telescopes and not all DSLR cameras can be achieved in certain ways. It just depends on your model, it just depends on the brand, it just depends on many aspects. But basically, the principles are the same. All the techniques I've just showed you are basically what I've just covered to highlight and, and, uh, and solve some of the problems you face with your equipment. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to work 100%, but it actually helps a lot of your unanswered questions. So... Thanks for watching my video guide. Please feel free to comment on this guide. Uh, I hope this has helped you massively to overcome a lot of your telescope and DSLR problems relating. Please post your images uh, and your uh, interest into the uh, Astronomy for Beginners Facebook uh, page. We'd love to see your images and thanks again. Thanks for your support to Astronomy for Beginners. And please look forward 
to another video guide from me. So thanks again, thanks for watching and clear skies.